Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make these two aluminium Teohama design slingshots. These slingshots were originally cast from scrap aluminium that I melted down into ingots and I showed you how to do that in my previous video. There will be a link in the description down below. I then took these ingots and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to melt them down from these ingots into a slingshot like this. The best part about this method of casting aluminium slingshots is the only thing that you're going to need for the mould is just some wet beach sand. Another good thing about this method is it doesn't just have to be for slingshots, it can be for pretty much any part that's able to be put into a mould and then pulled straight out. Any parts with overhangs will be a little bit more difficult. Obviously I'd recommend a much more accurate method for casting something like an engine part and that's where green sand casting or investment casting comes into play and I'll be showing you how to do them in my next few videos. You're also going to need a previous slingshot that you've either made or bought that's really comfortable and you enjoy using. And I like this slingshot, so I basically wanted to replicate this in aluminium very easily without having to make green sand. And if you do want to make green sand in a future video, I'll be showing you how to make green sand and cast a slingshot like this. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take a simple slingshot like this and pressing it into some wet sand and casting half of a slingshot like this and then how to make the other half as well. This is definitely not the most accurate or best results way of casting and you probably get around 75% success ratio, so 25% does not work. Much more accurate ways of casting are lost foam casting and that's how I made this slung shot and there'll be a future video on how to make this slung shot. The link will be in the description down below to my aluminium casting playlist so you can see how to make that. As well as that you can also make a green sand cast sling shot which was like this, the sling shot is currently unfinished but once it's finished there'll be a video on both how to make the green sand and how to make this sling shot. But if you want really easy quick moulds that require almost no tools or equipment, basically all you need is just wet beach sand or play sand, then this is definitely the casting method for you. However, since this method is quite inaccurate, you're going to have to expect to spend a little bit more time finishing up after you've done the casting. But you do save a lot of time on the mould making and casting process. So enjoy the video. Here you can see all of my cast aluminium slingshots that I've cast in the past and as you can see some of the ones at the start were really not very good and they're ranging in chronological order from the ones at the start being pretty much a fail and an experiment and the ones at the end developing a lot better and hopefully with this tutorial I'm going to help your learning curve to be a lot quicker and steeper than mine but don't expect to not make any mistakes when you start out. As you can see here, this method has taken a lot of trial and error to get to and I've basically tried a lot of different methods with like flattening out and getting the surface tension of the aluminium to go away and it's taken a lot of different trial and error but I think I've finally found a good method. So as I said earlier in a previous tutorial, I showed you how to melt scrap aluminium down into pure aluminium ingots. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to melt down these ingots into these slingshots. So first things first, you're going to need a heat source and that is going to be your forge. I like to use a coal power forge since it's very simple, very quick to use, but in the past people have also used propane forges, induction forges and even arc furnaces. If you want to know how to make a simple coal powered forge like this or charcoal powered forge, then there'll be a link in the description down below to Grant Thompson, the King of Randoms tutorial, which is really good and it explains how to make one like this out of a simple metal flower pot. This is a very simple forge which is just powered by an air blower which is just a pump and it basically forces oxygen into the fire which is either coal or charcoal and makes it get incredibly hot so it can melt the aluminium. Once you've lit it and turned on the air supply it only takes a couple of minutes to get really hot then you can put in your crucible and start to melt the aluminium. The crucible which I'm going to be using today is going to be a 3kg graphite crucible which I bought off eBay for £30 and although it is a little bit of an investment, I definitely recommend you investing in one since they perform a lot better than just steel crucibles. You can also, if you want to go low tech, use a steel crucible and the bottom of fire extinguishers works quite well, sometimes steel tube welded together also works quite well and I wouldn't recommend it but in the past I have also just used soup cans made of steel but they're really easy to burn through and can spill the aluminium all over the floor. Also to grip the crucible I'm going to be using some steel crucible tongs. Obviously it should go without saying while using the forge all of the necessary safety equipment requires is required such as like welding gauntlets, leather apron, eye protection from sparks or flying aluminium and obviously have a fire extinguisher nearby. 
So these are going to be the sand pots which I'm going to be doing the moulds in. And the moulds are very simple, they're just going to be sand with the shape of a past slingshot which I've made pressed into it. So this is a really nice shape with a good palm swell that fits my hand well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it into the sand. And this sand is very fine kiln dried sand but it's been left outside for a couple of months and it's now moist. So when you squeeze it, it sort of stays in the shape of your hand and then crumbles away. And that's about the right sort of moisture levels that you want so that you can then flatten it out and it will remember the shape of the slingshot. The good thing about sand is that when it's moist, the water boils from it, but it doesn't cause an explosion of aluminium because it can just soak into the other parts of the sand. So what I do is I flatten out the top of the sand then I take the shape of the slingshot and press it in like this. Now I'm going to build up sand around it. And then slowly, carefully take it out and try not to make sure any of it breaks. And there you go, that's the mould. Once your forge gets up to temperature, you can then bury the crucible inside all of the coals or charcoal and it starts to get really hot. Then you can start to add all of your aluminium. So I've melted down all of the aluminium which I'm going to use in this cast and the crucible is pretty much full and it's all molten and now since it's pretty much pure I'm going to make it even purer by adding this borax flux which is borax decarbohydrate and I think it's quite toxic so I've got to be careful to not get it on my skin and I'm basically just going to put in about half a spoonful I'm not really sure and I think what it does is binds to the impurities and makes them float to the top of the metal so I can just scoop them out with the spoon. Looking back on it now, what I should really have done is wrapped some of the borax inside some aluminium foil and then dropped it into the crucible so that it would then sink to the bottom and then melt and dissolve inside and then it would mix with all of the aluminium. What I actually did here was only poured it on the top so it didn't really do anything. I then just took it out once it all melted and boiled. So now I'm ready to cast the metal and it's already shiny on the surface because it's nice and clean. So first I'm going to cast it into this mould and then into the second one. So I'll just carefully pour it into the centre and fill it up to about there, that's good. And same with the other one. That's good like that. Now I'll quickly cast the ingots remaining. So there was quite a lot of excess from that. Now I dipped the crucible and I can then take this spoon and I'm going to try and use it to flatten out the metal. So the aim here was to try and flatten out the metal while it was still molten using the spoon. Now this method can sometimes take a little bit of trial on and error. You've got to make sure the aluminium is still completely molten because if you actually touch it while it's cooling, it will crack instead of joining together. The reason that you want the top surface of the aluminium to be as smooth as possible means that you have much less flattening to do later so that you can join flat pieces of wood. I also tried with another method where I put basically a baking tray over the mould and then when I poured it in the aluminium would go flat against the baking tray and that method also worked pretty well and you can use either depending on which one you have available and which one you think will work best for you. So they're still very hot and I'm just going to cool them down with a bit of water. So after quite a lot of trial and error, this is what the two slingshots came out like. This first one, which was the smaller one, didn't really work because the forks didn't really form properly because of the surface tension in the aluminium. So this one can be remelted back into another slingshot in the future. So this one actually worked really nicely and because I flattened everything out at the end with the spoon, it's nice and flat like this. 
and also it took the shape of the mould very well. So this is what the slingshot looks like once it comes out of the mould and I think it's pretty good. This one turned out quite nicely and I managed to make this surface quite flat and it formed to the mould of the slingshot very nicely. Now there are quite a few steps before getting a slingshot like this turned into something like this but from this stage onwards it's very doable and if you do come out with a slingshot looking as good as this it's definitely worth persevering and although it may take a couple of trial and error attempts and you may have to just remelt old slingshots down it's absolutely fine. First thing that we're going to try and do is even out this top bit here and for that I'm going to be using a combination of this very large coarse and aggressive metal file and also my belt sander which has got a very flat surface. I use a metal vise to hold my slingshot in place while I file on it horizontally just getting rid of all of the high spots at the moment. Notice also how I've got two blocks of wood on either side to protect the metal from the hard jaws of the vise. So now as you can see I've flattened out this area completely and it's now completely smooth so that I can laminate on other materials on this side. Now what I'm going to do before I actually laminate anything on is I'm going to take a file and smooth all of these edges out so any edges like this are going to be rounded off so that it's completely the right shape and also so that all of this is exposed bare metal. For doing this I'm using a combination of coarse metal files, a lot of people were commenting on my other aluminium casting videos saying that they were worried about using files thinking that the aluminium would clog them up and ruin them. What you can do once they've been clogged up with the soft aluminium is you can easily remove it just using a wire brush side to side and that removes most of the pieces. Also what you can do is use a very coarse file and they tend to not get very clogged up at all. On top of that you could also put chalk on the file before you use it and I haven't tried this myself but apparently that also helps. So this is what the slingshot looks like after all of the heavy shaping and as you can see the inside of this curve is very smooth from the rotary sanding drums and also the rest of it there's no sort of cast aluminium surface left it's all new fresh exposed aluminium from the files. So since this front surface is flat now, it's time to start laminating things on. So first I'm going to laminate on some of this rotten hardwood, which has been rotting down my garden for probably about 10 years. And I've sort of taken it up and microwaved it to stabilise it. And now it should be some very nice wood. And I've flattened off the edge with my sander and it'll glue on about here. And that'll start to build up some of the wood on this side. So in preparation for the gluing I've cleaned both surfaces and then I've also scratched them up with 80 grit sandpaper and the edges of files so that now once they're laminated together there will be just material going together and basically since I've cleaned up all of the edges the glue bond will be much stronger. So the glue which I'm using is just going to be a two part epoxy resin. So both the pieces are clamped together and I make sure that it's lined up properly and I've got just enough glue so that it comes out around the edges. Now I'm going to leave this overnight so that it's properly set before I work on it tomorrow. So thanks for watching guys, that's all for part 1 and part 2 will be up in the next couple of days. Once it is, then it will be linked in the description down below. Part 2 is going to show you how to finish off the slingshot, sand it and buff it up to a mirror finish, attach the bands and then I'm going to shoot it. If you did enjoy this slingshot, please check out some of my other metal casting videos and there'll be a link to my metal casting playlist in the video description. I'm always looking for new ideas on what I should make or cast out of aluminium and if you've got any good ones, please post them in the comments down below. But please, I can't cast anything out of aluminium that's bladed because aluminium's much too soft for that. Also, I don't really want to cast aluminium slingshot ammo because it just won't work. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you did enjoy my video you might like some of my others and you can see previews of them here if you want to find out the full videos then go to my channel and check them out.